when I first met you, it was at the Berkeley Spark, which was like a mini Burning Man or getting people ready for the Burning Man. And you were quite gracious and answering all my questions at the time. And since then, you launched this Kickstarter campaign and then sort of put it on hold temporarily. And I've been getting your emails and following the progress. And I'm wondering if you could just read the message that you sent out to people about your Kickstarter campaign and then the other one about why you put it on hold. Yeah, well, that's what, that's funny because actually I went back to the video that you uh, interview made of me at Spark mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, and I was talking about doing this fundraising campaign, and mm -hmm. now I'm actually doing it. Mm -hmm. um, it's been, um, I knew it would be hard, um, but it was harder than expected. It was a lot more hours of work than you would think to prepare to have a fundraising campaign on Kickstarter and so, um, yeah, so what happened is that um, I almost feel like I want to read the second one first. Okay. Um, which is where I kind of talk about it, it not going... Not, so we launched, but then I actually canceled the campaign after a week because I could see it wasn't going to go. You see, with Kickstarter, it's all or nothing, and the amount that we were trying to raise is 50000 and that's actually quite a lot of money. Um, it's a small amount for this project, but it's a large amount to ask from uh, your world in a short period of 30 to 40 days. So here's what I read as the final update when I canceled. Frank and Trake's fans. Can the campaign launch didn't go smoothly. A week after the campaign launch, we had just 16 backers. I've canceled the campaign in order to regroup. I am now able to see how the absence of outreach support impacted the campaign. Throughout the preparations, I have had a 50% success rate of working with others. 50% came through as promised and 50% failed to deliver. Unfortunately, the PR team I hired was of the 50% that failed. <laughs> it was not clear that they had completely dropped the ball until only two weeks before the actual launch. There are further details about this on the campaign page in update number three. This left a huge void in the realm of outreach, which became painfully apparent on launch day. The outreach plan and outreach actions, which had been entrusted to the team, simply didn't happen. A lot has been accomplished in the past few months, and you can see the results with a stellar video, campaign presentation, new logos, and landing page. Frankentrakes is a big project, and 50000 is a lot of money to raise in 30 days. By canceling now, we save time, energy, and money and can regroup and relaunch in a couple of months on the Kickstarter platform or another. Most of the campaign, campaign presentation work is done, so now all that energy can be redirected towards outreach. Um, you know, and then... Yeah, I just say thanks again for being an active and caring part of an important movement away from fossil fuel dependency. Um, so, so that was, uh, you know, mainly the issue is that there was outreach that needed to be prepared because when you're doing a campaign, you actually have to organize everything ahead of time. You can't just launch and then go, oh, now what do I do? Call my mom? You know? <laughs> yeah. So you, it's, you have to reach like a lot of people because you have very little time. It's sort of how the whole thing's set up. I guess that urgency is what um, helps people to focus, um, both for the people launching the campaign and the people that want to support the project. But it also makes it uh, very stressful and um, a lot of work in terms of advanced preparation. And I was spending so much time and energy just getting the video together and the rewards together and, you know, writing everything up that I didn't have time to actually prepare that part. And because my, my PR people didn't do it, there was just, it just kind of didn't get done. <laughs> so. Okay, so relaunch it in a couple of months and try again then. Yeah, and um, I'm very optimistic about that because actually even in the week that we were launched, um, even with the little bit of outreach that I was able to do, um, I hired one of these, you know, K 
Kickstarter PR <laughs> crews that you, they, you know, they, they reach out to you after you've launched and say, hey, we like your project, and if you give us a few hundred bucks, we'll help you and all. And, you know, <laughs> reaching out to these guys, reaching out to friends, family. Um, even in that week, I learned so much about what was working, what wasn't working. Um, I had a massive amount of return feedback, outreach, there were people that um, are sort of in my industry that run pedicab companies or are frame builders that wanted to meet me and talk to me and find out how we can work together. Um, the bicycle world is such a cooperative, um, a wonderful. It's a wonderful ecosystem. It's there's so many wonderful and generous uh, people in that world, and everyone's trying to help each other. We're working with what we've got. And we're trying to, to make our cities a better place, to make our world a better place. And uh, so even though we were not able to move forward at this moment, a lot of good things have come out of it. I'm getting a lot of good advice now from people who are experienced in outreach and who have done Kickstarters. And, um, and so I am very confident that with proper organization and preparation that this, this could actually go. Okay, and on one level, you're sort of reinventing the wheel, but on, on the other hand, there's lots of people moving in the same direction, away from cars and toward human-powered vehicles or, you know, battery-assist-powered vehicles, and I think it's really, it's going to save our cities because as it is, with the traffic in the cities, it becomes unsustainable and it's just downright poisonous because you know just one car you know puts out enough smog to kill a whole room full of people I mean you multiply that times a thousand five thousand ten thousand it's amazing we're not all choking on car exhaust smoke at the moment I guess because we're on the west coast and it, it blows east you know, people in the Midwest get to breathe it, or it goes down to San Jose, I guess. But it, it's amazing, you know, just the number of cars that are out there. Yeah, that's right. Um, actually, it does affect people here. Um, there, it's, there's been a documented um, fairly high rate of respiratory illnesses among children in West Oakland, for example, um, during the drought. Um, when it wasn't raining, I live um, just east of downtown Oakland, and I was having problems with uh, my eyes burning, uh, my sinuses burning, my ears itching. I was sneezing for hours every day, just from wow. just um, every morning uh, during rush hour and right after. So I was suffering so much that I put new screens on my window. I was thinking about getting an air filter, which is not really something I've ever seriously considered doing. <laughs> Um, and I was seriously thinking of moving out of the apartment I was in. It was so bad, and it wasn't until the rains came that I could breathe again and that almost all my symptoms went away. But uh, the pollution that we create, you know, from all the freeways and, and from driving everywhere all the time for every, for every reason and no reason really does have an impact. And I don't even consider myself the most sensitive person out there. There's other people that, you know practically have to put a mask on just to leave the house <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah so well <laughs> i i can remember the uh, bicycle liberation army in berkeley and they their motto was two wheels good four wheels bad and then the other one was they said one less car <laughs> yeah one less car so i think that's where a lot of the bicycle people Everyone's got their own idea of what's the best kind of vehicle to get around. You know, there's the pedicab people, there's the bike, the cargo bike people, there's the electric bike people. There's, but I think what we share is that desire to bring back a sense of place, a sense of community, um, to get out of the boxes, to. Uh, help people to see what they're missing, because I think that the car. Um, can be a very effective way to go a long distance when you have to go really fast. But if you're always in it all the time in your own city, in your own neighborhood, you miss a lot of what's going on around you and you really feel very separated and, and decontextualized from your local environment. 
And I feel that one of the things that the bicycle does is it kind of starts to reconnect you to that sense of place and, and to realizing, well, this is where you are. This is where I am. You know, what am I going to make of it? What, you know, how can I make my home and my community better? And I think that when you don't really have to be where you're at, I think it's, there's sort of a, a shutting out of what's not pleasant rather than sort of an embracing of what's real and then working with that, which, which always seems to bring greater benefits than that kind of denial <laughs> approach. <laughs>